Today's youth need teachers, volunteers, and most of all, well, they need you. I'm Doug Edwards, and I'm going to be talking with real youth mentors and students to give you the knowledge you need to be the best youth worker possible. This is Youth Worker on Fire. Well, youth workers, it's that time of year again. It's holiday time. I mean, you know, we have some holidays all year round, and all the other countries seem to as well. Some kind of tradition, some kind of holidays. But hey, by the time you hear this, Thanksgiving, for this year anyway, has already passed. So now we are on our way to Christmas and the new year. So Christmas is about new beginnings. Jesus was a new beginning in time and space that God had planned a long time ago before Christmas as we know it. Some will say he knew this was going to happen before the earth began. I'm going to take a little chance on you here, though. It's also about uh, doing the right thing. Christmas is not about being safe because sending Jesus to the earth was not a safe thing. But let's talk about some things that I did in student ministry when I was doing it full-time. But here is some of the things we did for Christmas season almost every year, but some would skip years because there wasn't that many weeks in the season. And uh, have, uh, have a Christmas party for associate staff was one of our main things that we did every year. We did it for them. We did it for their families, uh, their children, if they had children. And if they, they were not married, they could bring a date, different things like that. And that we do it at the beginning of December, as close to right after Thanksgiving holidays as possible, because it didn't interfere with all the parties. Parties are happening throughout the entire month of December. So the sooner you do them, the better, because some of their businesses are having parties and all kinds of things. The church is having other parties for the entire congregation. You know, no telling what all is happening out there. Certain things in certain cities, depending on if you're a small town or a large town. And so uh, we did some things like this. Now, what's my favorite verse? My favorite verse is all things are possible with God. When Gabriel is talking to Mary in the book of Luke, she says, oh, how in the world is this going to happen? How in the world is this going to be? And he says this to her. And I, I think that is just so classic, so amazing. Of course, it's so God for him to say, With God, nothing is impossible. And what time of the year do we need to hear this, especially if you have students that have gone through tragedies? Christmas is not the same as it used to be, or some of them that need to kind of remember that Christmas is not just about them and gifts and being spoiled and that sort of thing. But uh, here's one of the things that we did with students almost every year because it seemed to be just a big hit with them. And we would have them bring ornaments and different things like that that we could use and wrapping paper. And we would bring toilet paper as well as get some extra wrapping paper in case they didn't do get enough of it because you can't always trust your students, especially if you have a large group or a medium-sized group. So one thing that we would do, remember, there's not that many weeks for you to do all these things that you really wish you could do and want to do. But with the with the... Wrapping a student per team, we'd break into teams, gift wrap one student per team, and this is like during a regular meeting during the holiday season, and have a hilarious prize for the winning team because they would all get together as a team and dress up one student and wrap them like they were a gift. And then afterwards, if you want to, you can have all, you know, laugh a lot about it, different things like that. And so, what was one of my craziest Christmas memories? As a teen, my craziest Christmas memory was my dad and I. Now, listen, we came from a large family, but we didn't meet with my dad's too much. He had less of a tr- tradition than my mom because he was brought up in extreme poverty. His dad died when he was six. He started working in the tobacco fields in North Carolina when he was nine years of age. So, you're not doing a ton of celebrating when you're family of 11 kids are ostracized from the rest of the family. But we would go to this, at my my mom's side, 
for a tradition of probably 70, 80 years I don't, uh, before it ended, and it ended because my great-grandmother finally said, listen, enough is enough, and about three years later, she passed away. About 70 of us would show up at her house on Christmas Eve. We'd exchange gifts on Christmas Eve, and it was a big celebration, and we'd have a big meal together. And this Christmas Eve, Dad and I, for some reason, came home early. And uh, we had a big fireplace uh, in our den, and we could see straight across to our cousins, uh, to our great uncle's house. Uh, while we were there looking at the fire, Dad and I, and I don't know why he and I came home without the others first. And all of a sudden, we hear this kaboom, and we see this big flash of fireball across the street. And my cousin Timmy found out later to put a firecracker in what he thought was an empty gas can and it was empty but there's fumes left in the can and when he put that in there because he was always experimenting with stuff and he this was no different than what he normally did put that firecracker in there blew up had it in a which is a garage separated from the house filled the entire garage with a fireball and so my dad runs across the street to try to help and my oldest cousin Stephen rant was coming across because he saw what had happened to with a hose and had the hose wide open and soaked my dad before he ever got to the fire. But uh, that was one of our craziest events. And of course, the fire truck show up and the whole bit, yay, it's Christmas Eve at the Blairs and Edwards, you know. That's my craziest Christmas that I can remember. I'm sure there are other crazy Christmases. My best Christmas memories, though, are with my my wife, Colleen, and, and the children. I don't remember one specific one. I mean, I can remember one when I got this giant amp for my son, Ryan, because they said, I, you know, we only have a budget of like 100 bucks or something like that, or may have been two, 200. I don't know what it was. You're never going to find a, a, a nice amplifier for that. And of course, I, that was a challenge, and I went out and I found a, a used amp that was probably worth six, six to $800 at one time, Fender amp. And, you know, and that was pretty amazing. But when the kids are small, it was so great because, unfortunately for my wife, because we always had these big things that we were doing with the church, Christmas Eve show that she sang in, and I would play or sing or run sound or do something. So that drained us because we are doing weeks and weeks of that on top of regular meetings. But she was such a great mom, it is such a great mom and grandma now. So what would I do differently about Christmas over the years of my family if I could have? Uh, But let me say first, getting up with the children, and and I was not a morning person, getting up with the children, though, and and my wife was amazing. They're so excited. They're looking at the gifts. They can't believe what we've given to them, and they're happy about it. They're snuggling up in their pajamas with us, you know, and, and the younger they were, the better it was. You know, you get toward adolescence, it gets a little rough and stuff, but my best Christmas memories are with them, no one else. We had, had great Christmas memories from the past with my parents and sisters and all that and big family, but there's nothing like having your own children and your own family. There was nothing better in the world for me. What would I do differently, though? Well, years later, I started doing uh, with my volunteer staff, and I had this wild hair that I really wanted to take them to Colorado. I've talked about that before, but the first years I took college students to Colorado because I want to keep engaging them. We were not a huge college town, and so we started doing a Colorado trip for college students. Always a step up from where we took the middle school sledding, then we take the high schoolers to the East Coast Mountains to learn to ski. We did conferences before that, and I realized we're in this beautiful this beautiful, beautiful climates and areas in the wintertime for Florida students, especially seeing snow, but we couldn't, we weren't spending much time in the elements. So we started doing devotions on the mountain, in the snow, and as well as at the hotel, different things like that. We started doing them right. We found the best time for college students was the week before Christmas. As soon as they got out of exams, we got on a plane and we'd fly out to Colorado and we'd do that for three days, so it, that would make it a, a about a four day, four to five day trip, and then we get back on either the twenty third. We try to sometimes we got back on the twenty fourth if we had problems with planes getting out of the out of that area, 
and then we'd have the big rehearsal for the 24th. And then I would be so tired that I would sit in a chair while we did the things, uh, you know, with the kids. And my wife, of course, had already worked herself crazy while I was gone, taking care of three kids. And, and a couple of times she went. But if I do something differently, I would never have done that trip right before Christmas. So what I want you to concentrate on, if you have a family, if you're in student ministry, or if you've got a business, to try to find a way not to run around, not to go so big during those times that's it's low-hanging fruit. Man, it's so easy to do big, big things at Christmas time in student ministries or for your business or whatever it is. And some things I get at the physical year if you're in all that, but you're a volunteer. And my volunteers are dealing with this too. And I don't think it's the best thing to do. If I were to do it over again, I would have stopped all of that and giving my giving my staff, giving uh, giving my students two weeks off. We did that some. We finally figured that out after being in a place a long time. If I were to do anything different, I would do that differently. Later, we did move it to spring break time to take the college students out. Whatever you do with, with Christmas and with the New Year's and all that, make sure you focus on your family. Focus on your time with God. The other thing that we did was that we would go to a homeless shelter or a family shelter for people who are homeless. We were very fortunate that we had one in the area that was for families to help them get back on their feet, get, get them into a job. Uh, we got to go out, and that was a safe place. We were able to to work in and go and help do the decorations during Christmas time, help do meals. Youth Worker on Fire is out of here for the Christmas, well, not for the Christmas season. You're going to have some more sessions. My son, Ryan Edwards, will be editing for you. And uh, I hope this helps you at Christmas time. Do some things. And maybe take some breaks that you needed to take. Try to have all your plans ready for January, February, and March, if you can, so that you're not rushing and going nuts, uh, so that you really can focus on your family or your loved ones or whatever it is that you need to do. May not be traditional for your church to do those things, but I say take a chance, you know, look for the impossible, ask God to show you a holy surprise in your group, and we're out. So, Youth Worker on Fire, we'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Youth Worker on Fire podcast. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think. Stay tuned for more informative episodes.